Hi guys, welcome back. So what do you reckon then is going to be more accurate? We've got FX branded JSB exacts in there. This particular batch I've been shooting these since 2010, so I know exactly how these perform. They're a particularly well-formed pellet, these ones. It's a decent batch. They've got very little weight variation through a tin. They're slightly longer as well, actually, than average, and they're slightly overweight at 8.5 grains. And we've got here the PB Mako slugs, which you've probably seen in the last couple of videos. The plan is, is to get some targets out. We'll just do a quick zero check at 25 yards just to make sure that everything's okay and we'll get a judge of how they perform. And then we're going to run them straight out to 45. Now, it is quite windy out there. It's gusting sort of 7 to 10 mile an hour and it's switching back and forth. So it's certainly enough to keep you on your toes using a traditional lead pellet. It'd be interesting to see whether or not the slugs directly compared to the pellets are any better or any worse. So I'm certainly interested to find out. I'm going to get some targets knocked up and i'll see you at the farm we'll just chuck maybe five slugs through on that little 25 yards crosshair down there just to give us a reference point and then we'll run these out to 45 and then we'll come back and we'll directly compare them with the pellets let's go oh that's taken the um, middle right out of that crosshair almost interestingly this is a fresh little packet of these pb mako slugs and these ones actually feel a slightly looser fit in that barrel compared to the last ones. All right, so it's three through the same hole. Let's just do pushing them slightly further into the barrel. Just do a couple more quick. Right, let's run you straight down there. Twenty-five yards, zero check. Uh, that's probably, I don't know, nine mil, something like that. We've got this big crosshair here, so I'm going to go take this card out now to forty-five, and I'll see you out there. Okay, so we're at forty-five now. Got the bipod up a bit higher than I'd really like it. It's not particularly comfortable on the old shoulder, but the wind's swelling around a little bit. The wind's actually not too strong at the moment, but there's certainly enough to keep you on your toes at this sort of range. You would definitely be making some windage allowances if you were shooting an HFT course in this weather. Right, Mako slugs, 45 yards, bit of a twitchy breeze. GoPro's on down the end. Right, so that's one and a half mil dots of drop from a 25 yard zero. Bang on the centre line again, near enough. I think we've got a, probably a pellet's width to the right hand side of that centre line. Oh, <laughs> and that one's touching it. These slugs definitely feel a little bit looser going into the barrel than the last little packet I was using. Don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, but they seem to be pretty accurate at the moment. Right, so the wind's just taken that one a little bit to the left of the first two. But realistically, that wouldn't have pulled you out of your, your target on an HFT course, that's for sure. These are very predictable. Just by feeling that wind on my face, I can see roughly where they're going to land. So they would probably be really good if your barrel suits them and you can make them work. They would potentially be good for a bit of competition shooting. I don't even know how many I've shot now. I'm just quite enjoying using these. I can feel that wind's just twitching a little bit. The wind at the moment is almost sort of from behind us really, maybe coming from sort of seven o'clock-ish. So from where you are with the camera, it's sort of coming up this way. And now it's blowing this way in my face. <laughs> Right, I think that's enough of those. We'll go straight down there. I've got a bit more confident with the old GoPro placement now. Look, I'm getting closer and closer. Right, let's stop that. So that's our 25 yard zero. Look, that's probably 10 mil. That's probably 25, 24, 25 mil, maybe about an inch. And with that wind, that's quite surprising. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go and quickly pull the barrel through. I will just run a few pellets through at 25 yards just to make sure that it's at a bit of a lead in first just to make it a fairer test. Right, FX branded JSBs, 8.4 grains, 25 yards. We'll just quickly pop a few through and just establish a zero. So that's just a little bit above my crosshair at the moment, that first one. Don't forget, I'm not aiming off and we've still got a bit of a swirly breeze here. Looks about the same group size as the slugs, I should think. Right, so it came in just slightly above the crosshair marking, but 
we're not really looking at where the impact points are relative to the crosshair, but that will give us a good reference point for measuring the drop. So probably that might even be a slightly smaller group than the slugs as it goes. We'll get it measured up. Right, we'll take this big card out. We'll get it out at 45. And what I'll be doing is putting my crosshair that I've used for here onto here, and then we'll be able to measure the drops and watch the wind deflection. So I'll see you out there. Right, so we're back at 45. We've got the JSB FX branded pellets. The 8.4 grains, I think they shot a slightly smaller group at 25 than the slugs did this morning. Let's see how they do at 45. Remember, I'm not aiming off, so we're going to be measuring the wind deflection and also the drop, and then we should be able to compare the two, hopefully. Okay, so immediately there's less drop with the 8.4 grain pellet, so there's probably a full mil dot's worth of movement between 25 and 45. Okay, so that second one, there's probably a pellet gap between that and the first came in just slightly higher just above it now this batch of pellets I've used these at two HFT world championships over the years I'm very familiar with how they perform and they are a very well made and formed pellet they actually come up slightly overweight they average 8.5 grains in reality and they're one of the slightly longer batches as well as in the length of the pellet they're slightly longer than some of the more recent batches whether that's one of the reasons why they're better, I don't know, but when I spotted them, I bought as many as I could back in 2010 and it paid off, so happy with these. These are banging straight down that centre line. Oh, so the wind caught that one. That one took a little bit off to the right. Okay, let's run you down there. Okay, so that group looks to be slightly broader than it is with the slugs. The vast majority of these pellets though went through this little group here and this was pretty much all of the wind deviation. I don't quite know what happened to this one, maybe I wobbled a little bit. But that's quite interesting. When that wind died off, the pellets certainly had that better grouping, but I think as the conditions got worse and the wind picked up, I definitely think that the slugs will have a little bit of an extra edge. So we need to get these back home and we'll measure these up. So I'll see you back home. Right, well then results are a little bit closer to call than I thought they would be. Yes, the Mako slugs shot a slightly smaller group at 23 mil outside edge to outside edge compared to a 25 mil group with the FX pellets. Now, the bulk of them pellets went in this little area here. I've got four around the outside. I felt the wind switch and of course it just drifted them over slightly. This one up here, I'm not entirely sure what happened there. Maybe I wobbled off of that one, I don't really know, but these are certainly consistent in the wind they're easy to judge where they're going there's more of a spread in this group with the makos than i thought there should be especially comparing them to the ones that i was shooting last week now the ones that i was using today are from a different batch than the ones that i was using last week i mentioned that they were a lot looser in the barrel than the ones i was shooting last week and it highlights just how critical that barrel fit really is for a lot of these slugs i was hoping that this group would be marginally smaller in the conditions we had today and also there's a lot more drop here than there was with that last batch the last batch would have been another half a group higher at that sort of range at 25 yards we've got a nine mil group here although the bulk of those were through this sort of smaller top section with one that dropped a bit low at this sort of range that's probably a seven mil group there so that potentially shows that they could even be bench rest accurate at that sort of range now if you went through all of the preparation that you would do with normal bench rest ammo, sizing them, weighing them, and really going over them with a fine tooth comb, then I bet they would be a good bet. However, you can do exactly the same with these pellets. Yes, this is a good batch. They do still have some weight variation through a tin. You can size these if you wanted to. So again, these groups can be improved. That was a nine mil group there and not aiming off. Now in calm conditions, if I am aiming off at that range, I'd expect seven and a half to eight mil is my normal. And with this one here, that measured 25. Again, in calm conditions, if I'm aiming off, I generally expect to keep them under a 20 mil circle without too much of a problem when I'm aiming off. It's future me. So since filming the slugs versus pellet video, I've been doing some further testing. Now this group here, this is a nine mil group shot with Air Arms Diablo Fields, these are another 8.4 grain Diablo pellet made by JSB. 
there's your batch code on the back of that. That's a dozen shots at 45 yards. Now, the wind had died right off at that time. The conditions seldom allow you to shoot groups like this. I was aiming off and everything aligned just to be able to do it. When you see these on the internet, this is not common. It doesn't happen very often. Everything's got to be just right. But I did have it on film. However, I trod on the memory card now. I've got a problem. So I'll see if I can get it off of there. Anyhow, back to the film. So have airgun pellets had their day? Well, no, I don't think they have because the majority of rifles aren't going to be able to shoot slugs to the best of their ability in any case, especially in the smaller calibers. You can go to pretty much any gun shop wherever you are in the world and buy a mid to top end brand of pellets and you will get a decent degree of accuracy. And as I've mentioned with some sorting and pellet prep, you can tighten these groups up even more. And then also the cost. The decent JSBs are still about a third the price of these ones. So it's hard to suggest that slugs are going to take over. Yes, they show some potential, but even through my rifles and the different barrels I've got, from the same brand, there's clearly some different tolerances through the batches, much like there is with all your pellets. So even with slugs, you do need to batch test. You're probably going to need to do a bit more sorting to get the absolute best of them. So next thing I think I need to do is try and get some of the FX Halo slugs. They'll be an interesting one to try. I'd like to directly compare the FX pellets and the FX slugs together to see if there's a decent difference between them and some sort of justification for the cost. We'll see, but I'm a bit disappointed with those today. These did exactly what I thought they would. So I've been using these for years, so I knew exactly what they would do. But I think that's it for this one, guys. I will catch you in the next one.